Hi, Dr. Osborne here with Web Wellness University, and today I want to talk a little bit about nutrition and your thyroid. Hypothyroidism is one of the most commonly diagnosed conditions in the United States today, and it's one of the top five medications prescribed in the United States. But very few doctors actually pay attention or give notice or investigate appropriately the nutritional relationships with your thyroid gland, your thyroid hormone, and vitamins and minerals. So I want to talk a little bit today about what you can do or have your doctor do or investigate to ensure that the reason your thyroid isn't working properly uh, isn't just something to do with nutritional loss or nutritional deficiency. So the first thing that we want to understand, there's a hormone that your doctor typically measures called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. Now this hormone comes from your brain and it travels to your thyroid gland and it tells your thyroid gland to produce something called T4, which is another, sometimes doctors will measure T4. They don't always measure it, but oftentimes they will. And that T4 is what we would call inactive thyroid hormones. And when I say inactive, that means it doesn't really work. It's just the way that it travels through the body, through the bloodstream, so that uh, it can get to the peripheral tissues or get to the different organs where it's trying to increase your metabolism. Once we produce T4, we have to convert that T4 into another molecule called T3, which is what we would call the active thyroid hormone. So if we back up a little bit, that TSH comes from the brain, right? And it travels to your thyroid gland and tells your thyroid gland to produce T4. T4 is what travels through your bloodstream. And when it gets to its peripheral tissues, it's converted into T3. Okay, and T3 is what we, would, what we would call the active form of thyroid hormone. Again, T3 then has to get inside of your cell. Now, if we look at the cell, this is the cell, DNA is in the center of the cell inside the nucleus, what we would call the cell nucleus. On the surface of the cell nucleus, we have this little tiny key hole called a nuclear receptor and in the case of thyroid hormone that little nuclear receptor is where thyroid hormone binds so we get the binding of T3 onto that nuclear receptor and that my friends is what increases your metabolism so what are the symptoms of low thyroid low thyroid has to do most people will experience energy loss weight gain hair loss dry skin the cholesterol can go up we can develop constipation so these are all kind of common symptoms of low levels of T3, okay, or low levels of thyroid hormone overall. So now you kind of hopefully have a general understanding basically of the way these hormones work. Let's, now let's input or insert the nutritional parameters or the nutritional pieces so that you have a better understanding nutritionally of what needs to happen. So the very first thing is this TSH doesn't just magically appear. In order to properly make TSH, you have to in maintain adequate protein in your diet. TSH derived from protein, it's a hormone, but it has a protein backbone. Now, magnesium is also required to make this particular uh, hormone, as is vitamin B12, as is zinc. So these three micronutrients and this major nutrient here, macronutrient, are all responsible for helping us be able to properly produce thyroid stimulating hormone. Once we have these four in place to make this, then we can talk to the thyroid gland. Now, T4 is produced, but there are some nutrients required to be able to make T4, and one of them is iodine. You've probably heard of this before. Iodine is the necessary molecule. That four refers to four molecules of iodine. So that T4, you've got to have four molecules of iodine to go into that to be able to properly produce it. Now, iodine is one of those nutrients. If you ever see iodized salt, Salt in the United States is iodized as a result of um, widespread goiter epidemic. Goiters, when the thyroid enlarges because of, because of a, in this case, an iodine deficiency. So that's why your table salts have iodine in them or they're iodized. However, I don't recommend trying to get your iodine from that particular type of source because there are other negative consequences to overconsumption of, of standard table salt. You can get iodine from eating fresh vegetables. You can get iodine from eating seafood, kelp, and seaweed. These are all going to be good sources of iodine. 
Now, iodine is not the only nutrient required to make T4. There's a mechanism inside your thyroid gland that helps to draw iodine into the thyroid gland, and that mechanism, it's a little, it's a little um, kind of doorway, if you will. It's called a synporter, and it requires vitamin C, and it also requires vitamin B2. So that synporter won't work to bring iodine into the thyroid gland unless you have these two nutrients in place to run that synporter pump. Once we get T4, okay, we have all these nutrients in place. So, so far we've talked about seven different nutrients associated with getting from TSH down to T4. Now we have to get from T4 to T3. And this process right here also requires nutrition. There's an enzyme that does this conversion for us. And that enzyme is driven by the, by the nutrient or mineral selenium. Now selenium, without selenium, we won't convert T4 to T3. What we'll actually do is we'll make another compound called reverse T3. Now reverse T3 is also inactive. It has about one one thousandth of the activity of T3, so it doesn't work very well. And if your selenium levels are low, this conversion won't happen. This conversion will happen. The problem is if your doctor doesn't run reverse T3 looking at your thyroid hormones, and many doctors don't, most doctors in my experience look at TSH only and they skip all of these other components. But if your doctor's not looking at reverse T3, and, and maybe they did measure T3, you can't differentiate reverse T3 and T3 from each other without actually teasing them out. And the way you would do that is have your doctor measure reverse T3 as well as T3. So again, you need selenium for that particular conversion. Now, when we come over from T3, and that's before we have to activate that keyhole on the nuclear, that what's called a nuclear receptor on the, in the surface of the, of the nucleus of the, of the cell, that requires vitamin D as well as vitamin A. So vitamin D deficiency, vitamin A deficiency can also stop T3 from activating your cell to increase your metabolic rate, increase your energy, right? So two more nutrients. Now we've got these two, we've got selenium, that's three, we've got three more here, that's six, and we've got these four here, and that's ten. So there are ten nutrients, as you can see in this pathway, required for your thyroid to get from your brain creating TSH and stimulating your thyroid gland to produce T4, T3, and then to activate your cellular metabolic rate. So bottom line, if you have a diagnosis of hypothyroidism, your doctor says, hey, you've got hypothyroidism, we're going to put you on Synthroid, or we're going to put you on Tyrosent, or one of these medications, designed to enhance T4 or T3, you need to tell or have a conversation with your doctor about this component. Because if your doctor's not measuring these other 10 nutrients, what's going to end up happening is he's going to medicate you, but over time, the medication may help initially, but over time, as you, as you maintain micronutrient deficiencies, your thyroid's not really truly going to improve. In essence, you're not going to be treating the origin of why the thyroid is low in the first place. You're just going to be masking it by putting artificial hormones in. Now, some people will say, well, I'm taking bioidentical hormone, like something like Armour, and that's okay too. Armour is going to be a T3, and it's more like uh, your natural thyroid hormone than something like uh, Synthroid would be. However, I don't recommend using any kind of thyroid medication, bioidentical or not, until you're, you've had a conversation with your doctor to evaluate and investigate these parameters. It's very, very common that I see patients, once we've looked at these, they come to see me, they're already on a medication, and once we start correcting these deficiencies, what ends up happening is their medication becomes too strong and they actually become hyperthyroid. And, and, and so those symptoms would be things like excessive sweating, anxiety, night, night sweats, inability to sleep, hot flashes. Those are all symptoms potentially of too much thyroid. So when you start getting your nutrition corrected, if you're on a thyroid medication, remember, you can start to develop the symptoms of too much thyroid. So you have to be aware of that too. The so bottom line is, if you've been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, have your doctor, make sure you have your doctor check these, these nutrient levels so that you can ascertain the nutritional potentials as to why your thyroid hormone might be low in the first place. If you like this video, if you found it was informative, I want you to click the subscribe button below to get our news feeds. And I'd also like you to click the link below to get more information on this topic that you can print out and take to your doctor. This is Dr. Osborne with Wellness University. Have a great day.